What is going on, everybody? It is February 7th. We have a Wednesday slate. Perfect size, six games. That's what I prefer the most. It's just like the perfect balance of value comes out, you know, having to tweak things to make it fit. So I'm happy about that. Don't necessarily love the games, but, you know, Cavs Wolves should be fun. Pelican Pacers should be okay. Um,. I'm wearing good luck shirt didn't work yesterday. I'm wearing the uh, cat giving you the middle finger today. Um, that's pretty much where I'm at. 258.3, absolutely embarrassing. 77th out of 110. Uh, did beat Chipotle Addict and Westbrook for MVP. You know they finished behind me, so I'll at least take a little bit of solace. Uh, wanted to have Durant instead of Curry. Um, you know, Ulysses was whatever. It didn't really matter. 72% owned, under 4,000. That's not what I'm worried about. Oh, Harden. Got 10 free throws. Just, you know, light on the assists, light on the rebounds. Put up 123. If you told me Houston scored 123 before it started, you know, I would have expected a little bit more out of Harden. He got to 49 late, which I'm happy about. Um, outpaced LeBron so as far as that went you know I'm cool with it in all actuality this should have ended up you know like I should have been trying to get Westbrook instead of Curry Selden just awful absolutely I mean he did he could he couldn't have done much less you know that's what I get for taking a Grizzly they got beat by 26 never really mattered Josh Jackson hit value um, super happy about that um, I knew I needed to get at least some part of that game, so I am glad that I went to Josh Jackson. What a weird game. Orlando was atrocious to start. Hazonia looked awful. Just, you know, didn't get the value, only hit 4x. But Orlando ends up coming back and just shellacking Cleveland. Um, ben Simmons was fine. Uh, he just looked like... He wasn't involved in the chunk of the game that I was watching. I don't, I don't know. A lot of uh, like off to the side type stuff, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I didn't really like power forward last night, so I thought that he was going to be the lesser of the evils with the outside hope that um, the Wizards would just hack a Ben again. And I could just build up some free throw attempts. You know, Surge sucked, and he sucked for a while. Um, I took the flyer on the price, and it backfired. And then I went with Cantor, who, um, perfectly functional, had a lot of that early. Um, the game just sort of, you know, wasn't for them. I would have been better off going with, um, you know, Thon. But you really needed to have Paul George. Um, it was in your best interest to have Josh Hart. Uh, didn't make it into this winning lineup here, but you know Paul George was the play at small forward, which kind of frustrates me. Uh, I liked him in the morning. I just for some reason never tried to fit him in. Um, but you know that's that's hindsight for you. Uh, on to the next, I guess. Let's dive in. Uh, first up, Pistons. Uh, One hundred nine implied total is fourth. Um, they are hosting the Nets nine point favorites. I was like, okay, great. Definitely going to have some interest in Drummond. Oh, 11,000 price tag. Oh, and on a sprained ankle. But the price tag is just huge. You don't have a choice, though. You have to look at him. We'll look at Blake first, though. Um, Blake, 9,200 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. Um, you know, in my opinion, it's a great matchup for him. Uh, I expect Drummond to play on the off chance that he doesn't. You know, Blake looks significantly better. Um, I don't know. I have Willie Reed. Uh, he might be playing, actually. I know they I don't know if he's out or not. It doesn't matter. Um, I like Blake. I'd say... Honestly, he's probably a two. You know, they're not. They're coming in rested. Brooklyn played last night. Um, really solid matchup. 
if um, you know Quincy AC is up in the air, um, I don't expect Rondé Hollis Jefferson to play, although he is projected in right now on Fantasy Cruncher. Um, so, you know that opens things up a little bit more for Blake. Um, I think he looks like a great play for tonight. 9,200 is a little pricey. Needs to get to 46. Um, did that in his debut, but this feels like a good spot for him. Andre Drummond. Um, I'm worried about the ankle. I want to hear more about it. And that 11,000 price tag is is a monster. But, you know, 52, 66, 72, 86. Dude can get there, and people roast Brooklyn centers. Drummond played him at all this year. Uh, didn't go well um, earlier in the month. Well, it did once. Up in the air. Um, I have to say that he's a three. Uh, just because of the price and the inj injury worries. But if we get news um, throughout the day that he's good to go. And we should have that news because it's a seven o'clock game. I could see bumping drum into a two. This is about as good as it's going to get for him. Outside of like playing the Suns or something. Uh, Stanley Johnson, 5,800 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Uh, that's just a, a DraftKings play for me. Um, been playing pretty well with in the three games with Blake, uh, just over 20 in each game. So, you know, has some upside now. Then we want to look at Ish. Piston salaries are incredible tonight. Um... Ish is 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Just, an, just a great price um, to be able to you know, fit him in. The amount of time he's going to play is, is pretty clutch. So, especially with the way that he lives in the mid-range. So he needs 31 for value. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to say that he's a three on FanDuel, and I honestly think, uh, I don't know, how important is that flexibility? I'm going to say he's a two on DK. I really like this game um, for the Pistons. Between the implied total, just Brooklyn's you know, lack of defensive talent to begin with, and then some of this pricing. You know, getting like Ish and Blake or something could be uh, a nice high upside combo. Don't have a ton of interest in Bullock or Tolliver or Kennard. Uh, Bikes should be back, so no like Langston Galloway craziness. We'll go to Brooklyn. Alrighty. Damari Carroll, 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. It's actually a pretty good game for Damari Carroll. Ah, I need to buy a new mouse. Uh, Nets, 100-point implied total is 11th out of 12. Uh, not the best for them tonight. Carroll looks pretty solid. Let's move this. Needs 25. Um, you know, really good price on FanDuel. Not super playable on DraftKings, in my opinion. Uh, hit that number last night. You know, is generally around there. Especially on a five-game slate. Finding anything that looks even remotely like a decent play on uh, on FanDuel is is difficult. So, Tamar Carroll's a three. Um, which I think for small forwards on this slate is going to be a pretty pretty decent tier to be in. Um, I could see a lot of other people just not making it. So we'll work our way through it. Uh, Dinwiddie, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DraftKings. So um, we're looking for 35 been pretty good in his last four you know two games in the third at 32 which is you know perfectly functional but two games over 40 uh, has been playing a little bit better as of late 
so let's say he's also a three. No, that's, I don't know why I'm saying that. He's a four. His prices aren't the best. I don't have a ton of interest in Alan Crabb, but he needs like 24. Yeah, I can't get there. Jared Allen needs 29-ish. Don't really feel it. I'd think about it um, in a situation if Drummond ended up being out. You know, Allen could look like a little bit better of a value, but a price just isn't very good. Joe Harris, 3,800 on FanDuel, 4,100 on DK. Um, I have Quincy AC in right now. If Quincy AC happens to be out again, uh, I think that Joe Harris could be worth a look. Um, I think this is a, a good game style for him. Pistons do give up some threes. I'm going to put Joe Harris in here as a four right now. Um, that will go up to potentially a three if uh, if we find out AC is out. Only other guy I'd want to look at right now would be D'Angelo Russell. He's uh, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Um, you know, not a great DraftKings price. Speaking of, that Joe Harris one is just FanDuel. Um, Russell, you know, the minutes worry me. Um, he only played 19 last night, was solid. You need him to get to 27 uh, for value. I think that's a little bit more possible now that the Pistons don't have Avery Bradley and Tobias Harris. I think that sort of opens things up a little bit more for Russell in this particular matchup. Um, I, I still couldn't go crazy over him, especially because it's Brooklyn and they have a terrible implied total. But I get the idea of having him in a GPP. Now we go to the Heat. Uh, Heat are, have a 103.25 implied total, which is ninth. Um, Houston on the back-to-back. -back. So something to be aware of there. Um, I can't imagine liking much in this game. Uh, Miami's been so good defensively from a fantasy perspective. So First up is Josh Richardson. Salary's climbing 6,700 on FanDuel, uh, 5,900 on DK. Um, I like him so much, but this is just not a great spot. Especially with the salary climbing. Needs 33, 34. I mean, he gets there really, like, like he gets there regularly, but what are we getting? Doesn't matter. I like him so much more when his price was 6,000. Just because of the back to back. Um, I'm going to say that he's a four. Dragic, 6,900 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. That's a monster price. Needs 35, which he has only done once. Um, I'm not interested. Wayne Ellington, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. I'd, I'd be okay with Wayne. Um, you're looking for 22. It's been uh, not the best lately, but he has had two games um, above that mark in the last two weeks. Uh, he should be able to get some threes off against Houston, so put him at three. Justice Winslow. 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,100 on DK. I'd, I'd be fine with it. He's a four, though. <sighs> Tyler Johnson, just, I don't I don't know what's been his deal. Just not filling the stat sheet like he normally does. It's a great price on FanDuel, though. Uh, if he plays 26 minutes, you need him to get to 21, which is sort of what I have him projected for. Hasn't hit it in the last three, but did have two games above that mark. Again, I can't go nuts for it. I'll say he's a four. I just don't really like this game. Uh, Whiteside, I mean, I keep your, 
It'll be interesting to pay attention to the news on Kelly Olynyk. If Olynyk is out, then we're going to want to look even closer at BAM and probably a little bit closer at Whiteside. But for now, um, I don't want Whiteside or James Johnson or Kelly Olynyk. But I will list BAM just to get the name out there. Um, 4,200 on FanDuel, so you're looking for 21. Um, when he gets those extra minutes, he's usually in pretty good shape. I'll say he's a four for right now. If we get news that a Linux is out, um, I think Bam is going to look like a really solid play. To Houston we go. Oh, man. Miami's so good defensively. Houston on a back-to-back. You know, second game away is always a trickier back-to-back. I hope I don't like a lot here. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to uh, be interested in this. Harden, 11-2 on FanDuel, 11-3 on DK. Uh, sort of like yesterday, you know, Houston, Harden gets to the line a ton. Miami does put people on the line. Have they played at all this year? They have. Low scoring game. Oh, this was a couple weeks ago. Pretty sure I had Harden in that one, too. Went ham on them last year, though. Different team. Look, he needs 56 on FanDuel. Um, I, I can't imagine having James Harden on DraftKings. But I can't totally ignore him on FanDuel. As much as I would like to. I don't think... I, I would imagine I'd be spending a lot more on salaries from Minnesota and Cleveland. But, um, you know, Harden's a four. Pessimistic about this game. Chris Paul, 9,300 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. Um, I'm not really loving the idea of Paul. Uh, needs 46. He's had two 50-pointers, 44 last night. It's really not the worst matchup in the world for Chris Paul. I'm going to say that he's actually a 3 for me on FanDuel. He's a 4 for me on DK. He just needs too much on DK. I don't have any interest in Mbaa Mute. I don't have any interest in Aaron Gordon. Or Aaron Gordon. Eric Gordon. When's the last time I called Russell Westbrook Russell Wilson? Has it been a while? I wonder if it's been since like Seattle's been out of it. That was like my major bugaboo for a while. Now, Clint Capella should play a ton of minutes against guys he's better than. Mm. 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DraftKings. You would be looking for... 40, a big night last night, 46. Um, for a while I was rolling with him. I wish that, I don't even want to go back and look at my placeholder that had uh, Lowry, Capella, LeBron. So I guess it might not have been that good anyway. <laughs> oh, Capella. Yeah, I mean, Capella looks fine. I just really don't like this matchup. The back-to-back -back. Uh, you know, the Heat have been very solid on a per possession basis defensively. Um, one of the better teams in the league, so it's hard to get too excited. Uh, how did Capella do earlier in the season against them? That is kind of interesting to me. 29, yeah. Oh, he's just a 4. I don't like this game. Let's get out of it. We'll go to the one that's going to be real interesting. Cleveland Cavaliers hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota Timberwolves, four, or is it three and a half? Am I reading it wrong? What's the line? Three and a half? I want to make sure I entered it right. Yeah. Minnesota Timberwolves, three and a half point favorites in Cleveland. It's got to be so embarrassing. Oh my God. Come on, Bron Bron. Better than that. Maybe you're not anymore, but you probably are. 
Uh, LeBron, 41, 42, 40, 37, his last four games in fantasy. He's 10, 9 on FanDuel. He's 10, 9 on DK. You're looking for 55. Um, at home, it is a back to back. Did not go well last night. Have they played it all this year? I think I like LeBron James a lot tonight. Oh, they did, and he did not play well. They got blown out by 28. They've been so bad lately. It's just so, 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 so bad. Let's. Uh, I just. I have to look at this quickly. I want to know how bad they've been this calendar year. So since since January first, the Cavs have a negative ten differential. They are six and ten. They have the 26th best offense and the 29th best defense since January 1st. The bottom group of teams, the bottom five, Bulls, Nets, Kings, blank, Suns. You would never expect to put the Cleveland Cavaliers. This is a very different team than years past in that they suck. <laughs> now, with that said... Doesn't stop me from liking LeBron tonight. I don't... Th Ooh. Trade deadline is tomorrow, I believe. Am I right? Yes. Trade deadline is tomorrow. They got embarrassed last night against the Magic. I mean, they either LeBron says, I don't give a shit about the results of this game. Maybe we could look worse and make a trade. Or I need to just go balls to the wall before this trade deadline. <sighs> LeBron is a three for me. I can't. I just. One of these games, man, he's just going to do some LeBron stuff. Right? Fifth highest implied total, 108.75. Got to be a little interested in it. I hope I just like the dudes on Minnesota more. And I expect to. Considering Cleveland's defense is as bad as it is. Isaiah Thomas, 6,500. Sorry for my uh, little LeBron soliloquy. Isaiah Thomas, 6,500 on FanDuel. 6,000 on DK. So you're looking 32. Um, he's only been there once. Not a great game for him. Um... I'm probably just going to ignore him. No thank you on JR. Uh, Tristan Thompson is a little interesting. 4,500. You know, you're looking 22. I need to look at Tristan Thompson quickly. Cleveland's been a really atrocious um, <laughs> offensive rebounding team, but a lot of that probably has to do with Tristan Thompson not playing for a while. I think that he's an exceptional offensive rebounder. He has been this year, and I'm pretty sure he's been like the best. Yeah, been really good in the past. Minnesota, not the best on the boards. Um, I think Tristan Thompson's a decent sneak. Make him a four. Uh, Jay Crowder, he popped a lot for me yesterday. Got six fantasy points, so I'm glad I avoided him. Not that it mattered. My whole team sucked a bag of dongs. I'm not interested in Crowder. Not interested in Corver. Um, you could talk me into Jeff Green at 3,700. No Dwayne Wade. Um, I'm actually going to say that he's a three. Wade's not playing. I can see Jeff Green being a, a, a decent value. But let's get to Minnesota because that's what really matters. 112.25 implied total. That is number one on the slate. Um, 
And you should expect Minnesota to have uh, the highest ownership, I think, just based on matchup. So we'll start with Wiggins, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,100 on uh, DK. So, you know, we need 30 or 31. Um, three straight stinkers, but prior to that, two games above value. Um, I like Wiggins. It'd be hard not to. <clears throat> um, just a three, but I'm interested. Jimmy Butler, 9,600 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. Uh, so we're looking 48. He's only done it once since he's been back, but three games in the low to mid 40s. Um, most recent game was a couple nights ago, so they're coming in pretty well rested with Cleveland on the back to back. Um, really like Jimmy Butler here. How did he play earlier against them? Put up 51 in the blowout. Yeah, I mean, I would. I like Jimmy Butler more than I like LeBron. Uh, price is a little concerning, but I mean Cleveland is just so bad defensively. Um, I like the idea of Butler filling up that stat sheet. Towns ninety three hundred on Fanduel, ninety one hundred on DK. So you're looking forty six. Um, at 44 a couple nights ago. Did have 50 in Butler's first game back. Who guards Towns? Uh, Crowder, I guess? Man, in a Towns at the 5 lineup. What does Cleveland do? Kind of crazy. I like Towns tonight. What did he do in the first one? Did he go nuts? Am I remembering that correctly? I'm not. He had 40. I don't think he'll pop too much. We'll see. Um, he's just a three for me. And this is just... I mean, they're all in play because of the matchup. Taj is 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. Um... Needs 30. It's been quiet lately. Has the opportunity, though, to have a, a solid game. He's the guy that I like the least, I think. No, maybe not. He did assault them a couple weeks ago. I'm just going to say he's a three as well. I, I can't. It's hard not to. Just they're so Cleveland's so bad on the interior. And then Jeff Teague, fifty eight hundred on FanDuel, fifty seven hundred on DK. Looking thirty. Um, he's done it twice in the past two weeks. If any team is going to let you come out of your shell, it's probably Cleveland. If I had to rank the five guys from Minnesota, because obviously they all need to be owned in some sort of fashion. I would say my priorities would be Butler, Wiggins, Teague, Gibson, Towns. Yeah. But I don't have a problem with any of them. Memphis. Grizzlies, 97.25 implied total. They are 7.5 point underdogs at home against the surging Utah Jazz, who, let's see, since January 1st, where are they at? Yeah, ninth in the league, 13th best offense. Crazy. If I said that for, like, the past two weeks, it'd be really insane. They've just been hamming on people. All right, Marcus Saul. 9,400, uh, I, I can't even imagine looking at that. 
needs like 47. Uh, no fucking way. Is his salary going up? It did. Why in the world is he going up? You're on drugs, Fanduel. Wayne Selden, oh, 25 minutes last night, 10 fantasy points. He's at 4,500 now, so he jumped $800 off of that dreadful, dreadful performance. I'm good. Uh, Andrew Harrison is 5,100. He would need 25. I guess he's a four. And that's just on FanDuel. Only guy I would look at would probably be Jamichael Green. He's 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. So you're looking for 23. Had 21 last night, 24 uh, in the game previous. You just, you really just shouldn't have anybody from this team. Go to Utah. Jazz, 104.75 implied total is eighth. Um, started off with Donovan Mitchell. Mitchell is 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. Holy shit, I just saw Ricky Rubio's price. Um, Mitchell, 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 Mitchell. I haven't played Memphis yet. Needs 38. Had it in the two games prior to uh, missing on February 3rd. I'd be okay with it. Say he's a three. I like Mitchell tonight. Rubio, $7,600. What? This dude was $4,900 on January 24th. He's $7,600 now. The last four games for the Jazz. Golden State, Phoenix, at San, San Antonio, at the Pelicans. 133, 120, 129, 129. I just, I don't... And now they're going to go play the Grizzlies and get ground down and score 88 and beat them by 20. <sighs> All right, Ricky Rubio. He's 6,700 on DK, which is a little bit more palatable, but not crazily more palatable. He's a four. Just, I can't, he's, he's on such a heater right now, but he needs 38. Granted, he's done it. Three out of the last six games that he's played, so. Now, Rudy Gobert. 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Looking 37. Hit it in the last one. Basically hit it in the two previous. I'd be okay with Rudy Gobert tonight. He's a three. Rodney Hood salary up to 5100 now, which is a little depressing. Um, I would have liked to get him at 4000 again. 5100 is still a decent price for him. Needs 25. Um, if they were playing somebody else that were functional, I'd probably say he's a three, but I can't can't give it that much focus. And then Favors 5500 is uh, 27. Um, Yeah, I mean, he should have the opportunity to be solid. Make him a three. Two games left now. We'll head to the Pelicans. Uh, Pels hosting the Pacers. 110.75 implied total is second for the Pelicans. So, should be interesting. AD, 11.9 on FanDuel, 11.6 on DK. They played at all? I'm assuming Oladipo plays, FYI. Okay, so they played in November 
AD went hammered on them for 37-14. Um, he just he needs 60. He's done it. He's done it twice since Cousins has been out. Basically three times since Cousins has been out. Um, I can't imagine I get there. But. Uh, he's okay. Miritich, though. 7,200 on FanDuel. Uh, 6,500 on DK. Did, what happened to his price? Why is he such a value? Yeah, he went down. Down 300 bucks. So, not the best one out of Miritich uh, two nights ago. I think this one looks a little bit better for him. Um, 7,200 and 6,500. I think that he has a, a really good shot to provide some value. Um, let's collapse this. Yeah, I like, I like Miritich tonight. Um, I'm going to say that he's a two. Drew Holiday, 7,600. Uh, and the reason that I like it so much, uh, Miritich shoots a ton of threes. Um, Pacers give up a ton of threes. You know, I think that um, if Miritich has a little bit of a hot stroke tonight, he could go real nuts on them. Drew Holiday, 7,600 and 7,500. Not super duper duper interested in him tonight. 38 would be the goal. Um, he's just fine. I'm going to say he's a FanDuel 3 and a DK 4. Not a ton of interest in Etom Moore at 4,500 on both sites, but needs 22. He's a four. And then finally, Rondo, 4,800 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. Um, you know, got 30 minutes in the last one on night, you know, put up 33 fantasy points. If you know Rondo gets 30 minutes, you definitely want him at 4,800. So I at least have to think about him. Um, I'm going to say that he's a FanDuel 3 and a DK 4. Pacers, like I said before, uh, I'm assuming Oladipo plays. If he doesn't, well, you know, it'll look a little bit different. Fire up. Lance Stevenson. Might need to fire him up regardless. Uh, so Oladipo, 9,700 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. So you need 50 out of Oladipo. It's a great spot for him. He's had 50 once in his last two-week stretch. You wouldn't be upset with a 46 or a 47 either. Um, I'm gonna say he's a three. I actually I like this matchup for him. What's his boost with Collison out? Is there one? Can't remember off the top of my head, so probably good to check. Nope, not Oladipo. Collison. <sighs> Last night, man. Just bummed about it. Just embarrassing. It's an embarrassing, embarrassing performance. Happens. Happens too much, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, a little bit of a boost to Oladipo. So I'm fine with that. Corey Joseph uh, was atrocious in 36 minutes. He's uh, 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. Look, you have to take a look at him regardless because he's now the starting point guard, but just a four for me. I don't love him. You know what? He's, he's a three. It's, it's too much value, but just be prepared. Thad Young, uh, 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK, so he needs 30. Um, 
hasn't been there in the past four has the ability to get there I don't necessarily think that this is the spot for him though but I don't necessarily hate it I mean it's a good should be a good up and down game um, no real interest in Bojan at 5,800. You need 30, which, I, I mean, I guess he's been there in three of the last four, and now no Collison. Um, I'll say he's a four, but I don't like that price. Miles Turner, though, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. I expect him to be my center. Although I do want to get a little bit of word on his minutes. 15 a couple nights ago. 23 in their most recent one. I've got him set for 31 tonight, which is driving a lot of his value. Um, if that dials down, it will dial down my my interest in Miles Turner. But for now, uh, I'm going to say that Miles Turner is a 2 for me. It's all dependent on those minutes, though, so um, I do want to learn a little bit more about the Pacers. We should get word before that game. Um, if it were the 10.30 start, I'd be a little bit more apprehensive. Last game of the night, Phoenix Suns hosting the San Antonio Spurs. Suns are nine-point underdogs at home, um, and I'm expecting uh, no Devin Booker. Per the Roto World note, at least just to show you what I was looking at. Um, Devin Booker not expected to play Wednesday versus the Spurs. So I'm going to go with that. Obviously a very difficult matchup for the Suns. Uh, not expecting uh, Tyson Chandler to play. It doesn't generally play on back-to-backs. So this should be a decent spot for Alex Len, or at least you would think. Dude hasn't really been playing, but last time Tyson Chandler sat out, Len played 25 minutes. So you know I've got him in there for 24 right now. He's a guy to pay attention to. First up is TJ Warren, though. 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Of all the guys, this is the guy with probably the best sort of matchup. Uh, Spurs are going to let you get stuff done in the mid-range. TJ Warren sort of lives there and slashing to the basket. Um, so I do like TJ Warren tonight. Dragon Bender should be in line to get a couple extra minutes just because of uh, Chandler being out. Um, 3,800 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. I'm not a fan of him at all on DraftKings. I'm not a fan of him at all in general, but at 3,800, um, I'm willing to entertain it. Dragged and Oh my god, I can't type. Uh, he's also a 3 for me on FanDuel. I wouldn't touch him on DK at 4,400, though. Um, Josh Jackson uh, played well last night. 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Um, I'm going to say that he's just a 4. Uh, I, I just greatly prefer TJ Warren if I had to take a small forward in this game from the matchup. Tyler Eulis, 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. I wish that the price didn't go up. I uh, didn't play very well last night. Um, but again, he's someone that lives in the mid-range. So I do like Tyler Eulis again tonight. Um, he's a 3 for me on FanDuel. Uh, he's a 4 for me on DraftKings. Marquise Chris, 4,800 and 4,500. I uh, got 19 minutes and played okay last night. Um, you would think that if Tyson Chandler is out, um, you know, there could be a couple extra minutes in the front court. I've got Marquise Chris at 26, which is not bad for him. Uh, I'd be fine with him, but it is the Spurs, so buyer beware. But, the, I mean, the real guy that you would need to pay attention to in this game would be Alex Len. Alex with no E in Alex, apparently. Uh, Len is 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Uh, so you're looking for 23. Um, last time Chandler sat, uh, you know, Len put up 22.6. So that was would have been right on value. Uh, 
the Spurs aren't very spectacular against centers, so you know as long as he can keep himself out of foul trouble, um, he should be fine just from a, an opportunity standpoint. I'm going to say that he's a three. It's hard for me to like him too much more just because of how bad the Suns are. We'll close with the Spurs. Spurs 109 implied total is fourth. Uh, they've got arguably the best matchup on the slate outside of Minnesota, um, but the only difference in the Minnesota game is that the Cavs have LeBron James, and unfortunately the Suns have, I don't know, Mike James. <laughs> Actually, they don't have Mike James anymore, but <laughs> I don't know. I tweeted this yesterday, or retweeted it yesterday, and it made me think about it. It was a quote about the Cavs. Asked one of the Cavs how much DeAndre Jordan would help right now, and he said, Montel Jordan could help us right now, which just, it destroyed me. I had to get up and walk away from my desk at work. It's just such a funny quote. Uh, anyway, let's close this out. I've been talking long enough. Lamarcus Aldridge, 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK. Um, what are we looking at here? Uh, Spurs. It's a terrifying game. It seems like a game that Pop could sit a bunch of dudes and you don't find out about it till 9.30. So please take pause in rostering any Spurs. Um but Aldridge needs 43. He had 54 in his last game, 51 a couple nights, well, two weeks ago. Um, if there's ever a game where LaMarcus Aldridge should just be the best player on the floor, this is it. With no Kawhi, um, no Tyson Chandler on the Suns, no Devin Booker, like this is the game where LaMarcus Aldridge should be able to largely do whatever he wants. Uh, he is a two for me. Um, just... Be prepared on the off chance that he doesn't play. Kyle Anderson, 5,600 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DraftKings, which is just great. Uh, he needs 28. Last two haven't been great, but he put up 38 a couple nights ago. Um, this dude is super boom bust, super GPP play. But uh, I, I'd be comfortable saying he's a three. Um, Danny Green, 4,800 and 4,900 uh, so you're looking for 25. He's been playing pretty well as of late. Had a 34, a 44. Um, I'd be comfortable saying he's a 3. But Murray, though. Uh, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. He would need 27. This seems like a, a great Murray game. I don't know why I think that, but um, I'm going to go ahead and say that he's a 3 as well. I don't like anybody as much as I'll like Aldridge, but still and then you know Ginobili who very well could not play but we'll see uh, I'm gonna say that he's a four he's been playing a couple extra minutes lately hyper efficient um, I'd be okay with Ginobili in like a cash scenario it's probably it for me there so let's go ahead and throw these into the optimizer and see where we land Can't land any further away from the cut line than I did last night. Oop, one second. Okay, back. Let's dump these projections in. Taking care of the puppies is difficult when the wife is out of town. Speaking of, wife is back tonight. No live stream, so check the check my calendar on my website. But, yeah, no live stream tonight. We'll be back live starting tomorrow. All righty. I don't know what's going to happen here. What's, what's the expectation? Um, a lot of James Harden. A lot of Miritich. Ooh. I don't know. Harden and Miritich, I think. No, not Harden. Interesting, interesting. A lot of Wiggins. Well, I'll say this much. Based on the things that I said, this should look good. Um, so Blake, Aldridge, and Miritich were all two-star power forwards, or two-tier two power forwards. Miles Turner as my center. So let's just grab Miles Turner now. Miritich, Griffin, and Aldridge are there. Um, I 
I'm getting a ton of Wiggins, which I guess I would be fine with. So if I grab Wiggins, I think that I should probably safely grab... Ooh, I don't know. What does that leave me at point guard? Ah! Lots of DeJounte Murray, lots of Ish Smith. Um, so let's say Ish and that pulled uh, Aldridge completely out. So then let's grab Miritich and let's grab Blake. And then I'd be looking at these seven. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd really prefer to not go back to the Corey Joseph well, but I do like that lineup a lot. Although, you know, I'm not super married to Drew. What does the Mitchell lineup look like? Ish, Rondo, Mitchell, Wiggins, Warren, Carroll, Blake, Miritich, Turner. That's not bad. That's probably going to be my placeholder for right now. Let's duplicate that so I don't forget it. Tools, lineup cruncher, DK. Copy. Did you have a copy? Because we could watch the copy. Road Trip. Exceptional movie that gets slept on now. The peak of Sean William Scott. Don't give me that American Pie shit. I want Road Trip. Uh, advanced options, 10%. We'll do 50. Go. I could probably do another. Another 50. Bam. Well, that is an overwhelming amount of Nico, but no surprises there. Check out what I said. Put the tears back. So Blake, Aldridge, Miritich, Ish, and Turner. Miritich, Turner, Ish. So let's grab those three guys right off the bat. Aldridge and Blake are the other two. Seems like it'd be easier to get to Aldridge than Blake, but let's figure out where we want to go next. Um, it's a lot of Kyle Anderson, 4,800. I'd feel okay there. He's got weird eligibility, right? Like shooting guard, small forward or something? Or shooting guard, power forward? Shooting guard, small forward. Either way, that's he makes things fit. So if we do that, you know, we could look at Blake. Oh, okay. Um, I'd prefer one without Ginobili. So let's grab Wiggins. Yeah, right there looks pretty damn tasty to me. So does this one, but Ish, Donovan Mitchell, Wiggins, Miritich, Turner, Kyle Anderson, Blake, Taj. That I can deal with. All right, that's it for me, guys. So uh, you know the drill, like, subscribe, although I don't know why you'd trust me after last night's debacle. Um, no live stream tonight. Wife is home, so I need to do uh, husbandly duties, like cook some dinner. Um, but we'll be back with a video in the morning. Um I'll have projections updated all day. Um, check out Twitter for any news from me. Um, and that'll, that'll do it. You guys have a good day. Happy Wednesday.